Mm, so difficult. You know what? I identify as anemic due to renal insufficiency. Look at my serum creatinine levels being slightly over the reference range. Let's not mention that my cyst tendency is in range. Let's forego that from highlighting that to the doctor. My 24 hour urine collection test is in range. My ultrasound on my kidneys is totally normal, but my serum creatinine is slightly elevated, indicating renal insufficiency. And thus, I must be anemic. I'll go with 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams per week. Thank you very much, doctor. Vigorous Steve here. Let's design a couple steroid cycles with a handicap. We can only use clinically recognized dosages for particular medical treatments in humans, not in animals. So the equipoise or the finiplex pallets or the check drops, those are off the table. Only human treatments are allowed. But let's not handicap ourselves too much. Let's not discriminate between current treatments or past treatments with products which have already been discontinued since then. So we can still include parabolin, mastrone, dianabol, and even durabolin, which is nandrolone phenylpropionate. If this product was at one point in time approved for human use in particular medical conditions, we can select it for our steroid cycle. Before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by joining either the YouTube or Patreon memberships, where you can vote for upcoming deep dives or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday. I've pieced all of this together using various medical inserts of particular products or the scientific literature, which is available on PubMed, Google Scholar, Science Direct, or websites like drugs.com, right? All of this is aggregated from a multitude of different sources. I did my due diligence of researching, so you don't have to, but there's still a couple gaps in my research because I simply wasn't able to find very reliable sources of particular dosages used in medical treatments, whether those are current or discontinued, right? So fill in the blanks if you can down below in the comment section. Let's get started with the currently approved injectable steroids, starting with testosterone. We have a couple different esters that we can choose from, testosterone anethate, testosterone cypionate, testosterone propionate, and of course, uh, sustenon 250 containing four different esters. Those are all used in particular medical treatments, including androgen deficiency, delayed puberty, as well as inoperable breast cancer in women. So when you look at the dosages, they range all over the place, depending on the ester and the uh, medical treatments that this particular testosterone product is used in. For androgen deficiency, for example, TRT clinics prescribe anywhere between 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams per week. Could be anethate, could be cypionate, could be cystinon 250, depending on the country that you're getting your prescription from. Um, and of course, you know, some of the TRT clinics are a little bit more generous in their prescription. I've heard scripts going up to 300, 400, even 500 milligrams testosterone and anethate recipients per week. So um, depending on uh, where you get your prescription from, right, it might be very, very high. Now, if you go with uh, Merrick Health, for example, they're a little bit more conservative, but they're very much more in tune with your health compared to some of the other TRT clinics, which you can find worldwide. So let's stick with what uh, Merrick Health would recommend you, a very good and reliable TRT clinic that I work with. If you want to do your blood work with them, you can find discount codes down below. Code Vigorous will get you 10% off your blood work, whether those are the full male lab panel or the comprehensive male lab panel, which I have on my Vigorous Steve page over at MerrickHealth.com. Direct link down below. So they would prescribe anywhere between, let's say, depending on the situation, 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams per week, usually with daily micro-administrations, subcutaneous or intramuscularly. Again, it will depend on your current case and your patient care coordinator. So let's say up to 28.6 milligrams sub-Q daily. But in other cases, uh, for androgen deficiency, again, depending on the medical supervision that you get, the dose might be 50 milligrams to 400 milligrams every two to four weeks. So that's a bit of a difference. That could be 50 milligrams every four weeks or 400 milligrams every two weeks. In other cases of androgen deficiency, they're prescribed 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams even every seven to 10 days. For delayed puberty, it could be 50 milligrams to 200 milligrams every two to four weeks for a duration of four to six months. And for inoperable breast cancer in women, 200 milligrams to 400 milligrams every two to four weeks. So again, as you see here, and as we go forward, particular medical treatments warrant certain dosing guidelines to resolve these medical conditions. So personally, I identify with androgen deficiency going with a reputable TRT clinic like Merrick Health, for example. Um, fingers crossed, I would get prescribed up to 200 milligrams testosterone and anthate recipient per week with daily micro administrations 
which uh, based on my own blood work results should bring me to the top or slightly over the reference range. Moving over to remobolin, also known as primobolin, methanolone, and anethate. Prescribed in cases of sarcopenia and muscle wasting diseases, weight gain in women, advanced breast cancer or genitalia cancer in women, and weight gain in children from the ages of 15 to 18, assuming that they're over 50 kilograms of body weight. And again, the dosages range between medical treatments. So let's start with sarcopenia. The starting dose is 200 milligrams, followed by 100 milligrams weekly for two to four weeks, and then followed for 100 milligrams every two weeks, or 100 milligrams every three to four weeks. Again, it highly depends on tolerance and how the patient care coordinator is uh, supervising this particular person um, undergoing and resolving their medical condition. In weight gain in women, it could be 50 milligrams every two to three weeks. Or advanced breast cancer or genitalia cancer in women could be 100 milligrams every one to two weeks or 200 milligrams methanol anethate every two to three weeks. And for weight gain in children, there will be a dose of 50 milligrams every two weeks, unless they haven't finished puberty yet. And after four weeks of treatment, they need to take a break for four to six weeks. Again, this is all being done under clinical supervision. And yes, all of these treatments and dosages directly come from the medical inserts of Bayer Remobolin. I've had it translated a couple of years back with two loyal subscribers. Um, so maybe at one point I'll publish that translation in another follow-up video. Now let's see which medical condition matches the fitness industry the closest. I would say sarcopenia and muscle wasting diseases um, only in the context of caloric restriction and doing a ton of cardio and perhaps using thyroid medication that will be coming as close to sarcopenia and muscle wasting as it could get. So the starting dose would be 200 milligrams and then tapering downwards to as low as 100 milligrams every, what was it? 100 milligrams every three to four weeks. Right, so at least the starting dose is nice and sweet. Moving over to Decadurabolin, Nandrolone Decanoate. Prescribed uh, for anemia management due to renal insufficiency, the dose is 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams weekly. Metastatic breast cancer in women, 50 to 100 milligrams weekly. And osteoporosis management in postmenopausal women, 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams weekly. Mm, so difficult. You know what? I identify as anemic due to renal insufficiency. Look at my serum creatinine levels being slightly over the reference range. Let's not mention that my cystatin C is in range. Let's forego that from highlighting that to the doctor. My 24 hour urine collection test is in range. My ultrasound on my kidneys is totally normal, but my serum creatinine is slightly elevated, indicating renal insufficiency. And thus, I must be anemic. I'll go with 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams per week. Thank you very much, doctor. Okay, the discontinued injectable anabolic energetic steroids, starting with Durabol and Nandrolone phenylpropionate, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find clinically recognized dosages when uh, Durabolin was still used for the treatment of senile and postmenopausal osteoporosis in women or the treatment of advanced breast cancer in women. What I do know is that pharmaceutical anandrolone phenylpropionate used to come in dosages of 25 milligrams per one milliliter or 50 milligrams per one milliliter. I believe that the underground labs goes high to 100 milligrams or even 200 milligrams per one milliliter. Um, might be a little bit of a red flag enjoy your post-injection pain. <laughs> so uh, if you can find the medically and clinically recognized dosages, please link it down below. I wasn't able to find it. Um, I couldn't find the inserts and I couldn't find any scientific evidence that really dived into, um, you know, advised or clinically recognized dosages. So Durabolin, Nandrolone phenylpropionate is a little bit off the table because I couldn't find it. But please prove me wrong in the comment section. Moving over to everybody's favorite, Parabolin, Trienolone. Trimbolone hexahydrobenzyl carbonate. Prescribed in case of cachexia and states of undernutrition following major surgery, extensive burns or bed sores, and senile or glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis, which is iotrogenic, which means unintentional. This is directly coming from the medical insert of parabolin. In all four medical conditions, the dosing protocol was exactly the same. Apparently, 76 milligrams parabolin yielding exactly 50 milligrams net trenbolone. 76 milligrams every 15 days for one month. So that's at the start of the month, the middle of the month, and at the end of the month, three administrations. And then 76 milligrams every month for three months. So the first month, three administrations. And then over the next three months, three administrations for total of um, six administrations. Yeah, that's it. 
So um, assuming you identify with cachexia and states of undernutrition, again, um, you know, when you're doing a cutting cycle for a particular contest or just to get lean, the dosage would be 76 milligrams for three injections over a month and then another three injections over the following three months. Mastro, Dracenolopropionate. I wasn't able to find the medical insert of Dracenolopropionate, so I have to go with either what is being said on Wikipedia or the Anabolics 11th edition. Um, and the dosages are a little bit different. On Wikipedia, they say, without a reference, guys. So, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. 200 milligrams twice per week for the treatments of advanced and operable breast cancer in women. And Anabolics 11th edition mentioned uh, 300 milligrams weekly. That's 100 milligrams three times per week. I looked in all the scientific literature for uh, drostanolone, dromostanolone, masterone, but I couldn't really find anything conclusive. So again, feel free to fill us in in the comment section. Please back it up with some scientific literature because I wasn't able to find it. If you know the exact dose in the treatment of advanced inoperable breast cancer in women using masterone, drostanolone, propionate, please let us know, right? And if you identify as a, a woman suffering from inoperable breast cancer, apparently based on Anabolics 11th edition, you can use up to 300 milligrams drosanol propionate per week. Moving over to the currently approved oral anabolic androgenic steroids, Oxandrine Anivar. That's up for debate though. I believe I saw on Rick Collins' Instagram page that Oxandrine Anivar is probably going to get pulled from the FDA approved drugs in the United States. So fingers crossed that's not going to happen. You can still get your own Oxandrine or Anivar through compounding pharmacies or under um, you know, medical supervision for particular medical conditions, including weight gain, bone pain relief from osteoporosis, and the offset of protein catabolism associated with prolonged administration of glucocorticoids or corticosteroids. So um, the medical dose is pretty much the same. It's 2.5 milligrams to 20 milligrams daily over divided dosages. So that it could be one dose of 2.5 milligrams or uh, two to four dosages of let's say five to 10 milligrams daily and what medical treatment do we identify most with in the fitness industry weight gain duh so let's go with the highest clinically recognized dose 20 milligrams per day either 20 milligrams pre-workouts or 10 milligrams in the morning and evening on rest day even though this advice to split up the dosage um, for weight gain i would say that the full entire dose of 20 milligrams pre-workouts sublingually seems to be the sweet spot Anadrol 50, oxymetalone, only prescribed in cases of anemia. Do you identify with anemia, just like is prescribed for other medical conditions, which we highlighted previously? If you do so, you have the green light under medical supervision to use between one milligram to five milligrams per one kilogram of body weight once daily for a minimum trial of three to six months if ifthroporetic response is delayed. So if you identify as anemic and you start your medical treatment at five milligrams per one kilogram of body weight or 10 milligrams per one pound of body weight and you're 100 kilos, 225 pounds, 500 milligrams oxymetalone pre-workout. Freaking epic. But honestly, guys, you really don't need that much anadrol unless you're anemic suffering from a medical condition. You're on the highest dose that I would recommend to my competitive athletes for the sake of carb loading leading into a bodybuilding contest, 25 milligrams per meal over 10 meals, a total of 250 milligrams oxymetalone anadrol 50 per day for maybe two or three days leading into the contest. Certainly not 500 milligrams for six months in duration. So um, again, based on the medical uh, accepted dose, it could be anywhere between 100 milligrams to 500 milligrams pre-workout or 20 milligrams to 100 milligrams over five meals on rest days, so I would lean more towards the lower end of the scale um, instead of the higher end. Moving over to halotestin, everybody's favorite. Actually not, uh, halotestin is quite a terrible drug for your liver enzymes and your regression, but it's still being uh, recommended for androgen deficiency and primary hypogonadism. A dose of five milligrams to 20 milligrams daily. For delayed puberty, the dose it titrates over the course of four to six months. I couldn't find a starting point or an ending point Please discuss this with your primary healthcare physician. And if they're even crazy enough to prescribe you halotestin and not uh, TRT. Inoperable carcinoma of female breasts. For women, that's 10 milligrams to 40 milligrams daily over divided dosages. And based on my extensive research of how steroids affect fertility, I found out that halotestin was used and prescribed as a fertility medication. Yeah. Imagine how much angry sex all of those participants had over the course of their treatments. 
it's long been since discontinued because now they favored uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators or human chorionic gonadotropin with a follicle stimulating hormone as a fertility aid. But back then, um, again, the scientific literature is extensive. I'll link my steroids versus fertility video at the end of this one. They recommended anywhere between two milligrams to 30 milligrams daily for up to one and a half years. 30 milligrams halotestin per day for up to one and a half years. Your liver would be screaming at you and probably exited through your asshole or your mouth, running away through the corridors, yelling to be saved. And honestly, guys, you really don't need to go that route. Based on my fertility protocol of HCG, FSH, glutathione, and nicotinamide mononucleotide, NAD+, administrations, I would say that my fertility parameters are 10 times better than the fertility parameters of the men which uh, took halotestin as a fertility aid, right? comparing my levels to their levels. So let's not identify as needing to boost our fertility as an excuse to use halotestin. Um, yes, let's use androgen deficiency as an excuse. And then the dose would be anywhere between five milligrams to 20 milligrams daily, either taken pre-workout or half the dose in the morning and half the dose in the evening. On rest days, Proviron, Mestrolo, is prescribed for the decline of physical activity and mental alertness in middle and old aged men. The dose is anywhere between 50 milligrams to 75 milligrams daily over two to three divided dosages. And it's the same for libido management, same dosing protocol. Uh, androgen deficiency, they recommend 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams daily over two to four divided doses. And even as a fertility medication, again, we discussed it in the steroid versus fertility video, 50 milligrams to 150 milligrams daily over two to three divided dosages. Um, let's go with androgen deficiency. So that's uh, 50 to 100 milligrams daily. Let's go with the highest dose, 25 milligrams, four times daily, only in combination with testosterone replacement therapy, which we highlighted at the start of this video. Don't run Provarin solo at this high of a dose. I would say that 6.25 milligrams once or twice per day for people who do not use exogenous testosterone replacement therapy and don't want to have a negative effect on their HPTA and see their serum testosterone and their estradiol levels decline. So again, if you want to use Provarm solo, moderation is key. And otherwise, for uh, libido management or androgen deficiency, uh, up to 75, 100 milligrams per day. Moving over to Winstrol, Stanazolol. The injectable version is prescribed for the treatment of venous insufficiency. You sort of highlight that in the approved injectable steroids segment. My bad. So for um, a treatment of venous insufficiency, injectable Winstrol Depot is prescribed 50 milligrams every two weeks. And for hereditary angioedema, the oral version is prescribed up to six milligrams daily, two milligrams over three dosages. Mm, this is a little bit of a tough one because I don't suffer from pitting edema around my ankles. Maybe I should up the dose of growth hormone. So the treatment of venous insufficiency, I mean, the blood flow throughout my lower body is actually pretty good, especially in the middle. Sweet blood flow, I'll tell you that. Um, and in my legs, everything's fine, probably also because I do daily fasted cardio and I don't suffer from angio, angio Um, So if I were going to have to choose, find a medical treatment that I identify most with, um, maybe take a boatload of salt over the weekend and then uh, say to my prescribing physician that I suffer from venous insufficiency i mean look just look at my ankles bro i have pitting edema when i take my socks off please prescribe me please 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 prescribe me injectable winstrol depot 50 milligrams every two weeks and then when i take my prescription home i'm going to go with 25 milligrams subcutaneous every single week because subcutaneous administrations allows for a little bit more um slower absorption and for more stable blood levels and of course you're bypassing the post injection pain because injectable stenazolol post injection pain in a bottle Moving over to Primabolon S, Primo tablets, methylone acetate, used in the treatment of anemia due to bone marrow failure, one milligram to 1.5 milligram per one pound of body weight daily. So if you're 100 kilos, 225 pounds, it could be anywhere between 225 milligrams to 337.5 milligrams daily. Man, if you can source a Primabolon S, uh, you can run a boatload of it, almost as much as Anadrol. So uh, again, you know, if you suffer from anemia, why would go with nandrolone when you can run this much methanolone acetate, even though the oral bioavailability is kind of poor. Moving over to Android Testovis methyl testosterone, 
prescribed for androgen deficiency and primary hypogonadism. The dose is between 10 milligrams to 50 milligrams daily. Uh, women suffering from postmenopausal symptoms, 2.5 milligrams daily. And the treatment of advanced inoperable metastatic breast cancer in women. The dose is 50 milligrams to 200 milligrams daily. So let's just stick with androgen deficiency. Uh, we would be able to use the highest dose, 10 milligrams to 50 milligrams pre-workout. And let's say 25 milligrams in the morning and evening on rest days. Now, we have a discontinued oral steroid, at least in the United States, uh, Dianabol. It's still available through the pharmacies here in Thailand and maybe some other countries. Used to be prescribed for androgen deficiency. The dosage was for men, 5 milligrams to 10 milligrams daily, and women, 2.5 milligrams daily. Uh, so again, if you want to choose a drug for androgen deficiency management, and you go with Dianabol for a little bit of methyl estradiol, and again, you can also go with methyl, methyl testosterone, which also yields methyl estradiol. Um, Dianabol, let's say up to 10 milligrams daily, but methyl testosterone up to 50 milligrams daily. Man, hard choice. And a couple of drugs which were never approved for human consumption, even though they might have been used in particular contexts. Turinabol, for example, chlorodehydromethyl testosterone was prescribed to the East German athletes under a state plan topic 14.25. Apparently, these athletes were prescribed um, to uh, you know win at the Olympics. Anywhere between 15 milligrams to 35 milligrams Turinabol per day. Um, usually they took Turinabol without their knowledge because these were prescribed as multivitamins. <laughs> Pretty horrible, I will tell you that. So um, again, if you identify as an East German athlete and you're under medical supervision of a doctors with um, horrible practices, you can take your vitamins 15 milligrams to 35 milligrams Turinabol per day, right? Maybe it's labeled as vitamin T. Uh, I would rather take vitamin T in the form of testosterone replacement therapy though. Boldenone, undestinate, equipoise, used uh, for the improvement of the general state of debilitated horses. They prescribe 0.5 milligrams per one pound of body weight every two to three weeks. So if you have to extrapolate that, if you identify as a debilitated horse, um, being a 100 kilo bodybuilder or 225 pound bodybuilder, you would take 112.5 milligrams every two to three weeks. That's pretty low. Right? That's even less than hormone replacement therapy. So um, let's leave equipoise off the table. Nobody gets excited for 112.5 milligrams every two to three weeks. And then there's amibalerone check drops prescribed in the estrous suppression of being female dogs. That's, uh, depending on the source, 30 micrograms to 180 micrograms daily or 16 micrograms per one kilogram of body weight for five consecutive days. So being a 100 kilo bodybuilder, that's 1600 micrograms pre-workouts for five days, right? So you have to train every five days um, because otherwise it's not clinically recognized. Train five days in a row, right? You do your basic bro split, chest day Monday, uh, quads on uh, Tuesday, on Wednesday you do shoulders, on Thursday you do back, and then, you know, if you're a beast like I am, you split up all your body parts. You do hamstrings and glutes and calves on Friday. And then on Saturday, you have to rest Sunday also and probably for the next couple of weeks because your liver is going to be fried. So these are the clinically recognized dosages in particular medical settings. Uh, let's start designing a couple cycles, starting with the off season. Um, but we can only choose one compound for a particular medical treatment. So for androgen deficiency, for example, we can choose between Dianabol, Methyl testosterone, halotestin, or testosterone. Let's keep it simple and choose testosterone, either testosterone, enotate, or cypionate. And let's go with the you know clinically recognized dosages that are usually recommended through the TRT HRT clinic, up to 200 milligrams per week. So I would go with 28.6 milligrams subcutaneous daily. Now, this being the off season after all, and we want to gain some serious, serious muscle beyond what this uh, TRT dose can provide us. We can go with um, a state of cachexia or a state of undernutrition, parabolum, just prescribed in that context, uh, improving the general state of debilitated horses. Uh, do you identify as a horse? If you do, you can go with equipoise, but I would rather go with uh, sarcopenia or muscle wasting diseases. So let's stick with remobolin, methylon, enothate, starting dose of 200 milligrams, then um, 100 milligrams weekly for two to four weeks, then 100 milligrams every two weeks, then 100 milligrams every three to four weeks, depending on uh, what the healthcare provider is willing to do. So um, we could be looking at anywhere between 
200 milligrams, well, as low as 25 milligrams per week, but that's still better than uh, just running TRT. And since the primobolin is going to get lower and lower and lower over time, let's throw in some provirin for good measure because we want to control our serum estradiol levels, even though it's probably not needed on such a low dose of testosterone since we're going to add in decadurabol and nandrolone later on. Um, I do think that provirin is going to be there as an aromatized inhibitor to a certain extent on top of the primobolin that we're going to take. So um, we can choose a provirin for androgen deficiency because we already chose testosterone for that. So let's choose provirin for libido management, 50 to 75 milligrams daily. Uh, so let's do 75 milligrams daily, 25 milligrams morning, pre-workout, and 25 milligrams before bed. That's, this is week one to 16 because um, we also want to add in the decadurabolin and we use um, anemia as a reason. So we're going to forego anadrol 50 or primobolin S, the methylene acetate tablet for anemia. We're going to use decadurabolin and nandrolone decanoate for anemia management due to renal insufficiency. And again, you have to use your serum creatinine levels as an excuse for that. 100 to 200 milligrams weekly. So let's go with the highest dose, 200 milligrams per week, 28.6 milligrams sub-Q per day. So that's on top of the testosterone in the prima bolin. So now we're already with injectables, 400 milligrams, 600 milligrams at the start, ending up at 425 milligrams because the rima bolin is tapering off. And yes, we'll use the rima bolin subcutaneous as well for the most stable serum concentrations throughout this off-season cycle. Now, we're going to use the decadure bolin for only week 1 to 12 because I do like a little bit of anadrol at the end but both are prescribed in cases of anemia, and we can only choose one drug to combat and resolve our anemic state. So we're using anadrol at the end, but let's discuss serenabol. Again, it's not technically prescribed unless you're an athlete. Do you feel like an athlete? I feel like an athlete. Let's go with 35 milligrams per day, right? All pre-workouts or 17.5 milligrams in the morning and evening on rest day. So we're taking two orals, um, so again, make sure you have your tutka and NAC and vitamin C and your fiber and all of the detoxification processes in place because your liver is going to take a beating, but at least not as much as using halotestin for androgen deficiency. So I'm sure your liver is going to be a lot happier just using terinabol and provirin at the same time. So we're using dicadurabol and terinabol for um, its various medical conditions from week one to 12. And then we're going to switch to anadrol 50 switching from uh, decadurabolin for anemia to oxymetolone for anemia at, um, well, let's keep it modest, guys, not 500 milligrams pre-workout, so don't be crazy. Then your liver, again, is going to fall out of your ankle and run through the corridors screaming for savior. Um, so let's just do it moderately, 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams pre-workout or 25 milligrams with four meals on rest day or 50 milligrams in the morning and evening. And if you keep it modest for the majority of your cycle and your liver health stays sustained, prove it with blood work. For fuck's sake, Merrick Health offers blood work a linked with a discount code down below. There's no excuses not to do blood work. If you keep everything in range and you identify as a female dog in heat, uh, run some check drops at the end. Anywhere between 30 micrograms up to 1600 micrograms pre-workout. Right? I think 250 micrograms to 500 micrograms pre-workout is more than sufficient from the anecdotal reports that I've read online. Um, if you really want to hammer home this off-season and close it off with a bang, Anadrol, 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams pre-workout and 250 micrograms to 500 micrograms check drops pre-workout only and only if you identify as a bit. Moving over to a cutting cycle, starting with week 1 to 16. Again, let's just go with uh, Testovirin, Testosterone, Anathate, Recipinate over Dianabol, Android, uh, Methyl Testosterone, Halotestin for Androgen Deficiency. Same dose, up to 200 milligrams per week through subcutaneous micro-administrations. Then, um, you know, let's, let's, let's go with breast cancer, right? Inoperable breast cancer, advanced stages of met metastatic breast cancer. Um, we can choose from testosterone anethate, methyl testosterone, methylone anethate, nandrolone decanoate, also nandrolone phenylpropionate, fluoxymestrolone, halotestin. But let's just go with the proven, medically used trostanolone Propionate for the treatment of advanced and inoperable breast cancer in women. Apparently, based on Anabolic's 11th edition, 300 milligrams per week, 100 milligrams three times per week, or if you want to go with daily micro administrations, 42.9 milligrams 
sub Q at the same time you take your testosterone inhibitor or cypionate. It's a little bit hard to um, identify if somebody suffering from breast cancer if you're a man, right? You can still have breast cancer if you're a man, but these were only prescribed in cases of breast cancer in women. That being said, I would advise you to bring a bottle of wine or a bottle of Jack Daniels or a Suntory Gold, whatever your patient care coordinator that's going to prescribe you. Mastrone prefers, right? Bring it under the table, um, assuming they have a time machine, because again, Mastrone hasn't been clinically used for decades now. So uh, bring some uh, alcohol and bring your time machine so your prescribing physician can give you some drostanol propionate up to 300 milligrams per week, right? We're just using this as a discussion point. It's not exactly going to happen in real life. All right, that covers week one to 16, right? We're doing 16 week cycle. That's usually, um, you know, accepted by general population, even though I prefer a nine month cycle, ramping up the dosage over the course of nine months and then taking three months off for real, right? HCG monotherapy. And then on top of the Mastrone, the tried and proven cutting phase or contest prep stack, the Triforce, testosterone, Mastrone and Trimblo, right? We can choose between Equipoise, Remobolin, or Parabolin because all um, improve various states of cachexia or muscle wasting, right? Equipoise for improving the general state of debilitated horses, Remobolin, sarcopenia, and muscle wasting diseases. But Parabolin, the most hardcore drug you can take, you can take on the planet uh, for longer periods of time, right? Halotestin is far superior, but um, you don't want to run that anywhere longer than two weeks. Parabolin prescribed for cachexia and states of undernutrition, we're in caloric deficit after all. 76 milligrams every 15 days for one month. So that's at start of the cycle at week one, week two, and then week four. And then for the following three months, 76 milligrams every three months. So that's at week um, eight, 12, and 16. But you might want to forego this last administration of parabolin at week 16 because... Oxandrin, Anivar, Oxandrolone is prescribed for weight gain, which is the most identifying medical treatment that we can choose from. Um, and it's a little bit overlapping with cachexia or states of undernutrition. Discuss it with your primary physician if weight gain and cachexia can be run simultaneously. Um, and thus, uh, you can use parabolin and Oxandrolone at the same time. But if you do your last administration of parabolin at week 12, and then at week 13, you start with Anivar for weight gain, you still have a little bit of overlap of the trimblone hexahydrobenzyl carbonate because it has such a long half life and active life. And then you can throw the Anivar on top. Again, you know, 76 milligrams at the end of the month. I mean, how much milligrams of trimblone do you have uh, by week 16? I would rather go 20 milligrams um, Anivar per day, right? In divided dosages, 20 milligrams pre workouts or 10 milligrams in the morning and evening on rest day. Um, do you want to close that off with chick drops? Nah, I think this is more than enough, right? Assume you're not doing a uh, contest prep, then you would reintroduce anadrol maybe the last week before stepping on stage up to 250 milligrams per day, right? For two or three days leading into the show when you're carb loading. Um, so, you know, a lot to choose from, but I think this pretty much covers it. And we didn't even introduce a growth hormone, insulin, or Increlex, right? So if you identify as short stature, um, or an HIV patient, or a diabetic, man, there's a lot more drugs we can add to the stack. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? A lot more ancillaries we can choose from, all prescribed under particular medical conditions, but this video will be hours in duration and nobody has time for that. So let's just close it off here. Food for thought. Right? I think the medical dosages are there as an inspiration point to design your cycle. Uh, some are a little bit too low for comfort. Some are way too high for comfort. I mean, 1,600 micrograms chick drops or 500 milligrams anadrol, lunacy. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. Discount codes for Merrick Health if you want to do your blood work. And if under particular conditions, you require a prescription for hormone replacement therapy, the patient care coordinators at Merrick Health are excellent and they can guide you through this process. And while you're down there in the description section, have a look at my website. I have ebooks, I have personalized services in the forms of consultations and personalized advice by email. A lot of articles you can read for free, even some other sources that I can post here on YouTube. Bookmark that site, vigorsteve.com. You won't be disappointed. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at vigorsteve, vigorscrew, a front double bicep for you guys. You guys know what to do. And no prescription steroids in this picture, but I'm on a dose of Increlex, which is far below 
the clinically recognized dose. Let's look at this again. I mean, it almost looks like I'm on steroids. Almost. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.